Okay, here we are. No matter your situation, everybody has ups and downs when it comes to mental health, and there should be no shame around getting help. Rock Steady is a new graphic memoir with a guide of tips and tools from somebody who's been through it and thrived. Author Ellen Forney is here with me now. Welcome back. Thank you. It's good to see you. Nice to be back. Um, so, what inspired you to write Rock Steady, and why in this particular form, which I love? It's a beautiful book. Thank you. Thanks. Well, um, after my graphic memoir, Marbles, Mania, Depression, Michelangelo and Me, which we talked about yes, we after did. it came out, um, I, I got a lot of reader feedback that a lot of people used it like a manual. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, you know, I could, do, I could do a more complete and a better job with a manual. So, um, so that's where Rocksteady um, comes came in. from. Right, right, so right. So what, when you say a manual, what is it helping to teach us? Well, there's a lot of uh, coping tools and strategies for, for staying stable. And really, I'd have to say it's, it's for people with mood disorders, but really it's, it's for anyone who's feeling uh, kind of unstable in right. this unstable times. And really. that could be a mental health problem or not. It right. doesn't matter. It's right. also, I think, a good book for people who have somebody in their life who's suffering from some sort of instability because you can better understand. Right. But there's something about the graphic novel approach, I think, that mm -hmm. opens this up to people who might not have been open to self-help sorts of tools. Right. Well, the the language of comics really allows people to get in. I mean, there are, there are a number of different things that words and pictures and the, their combination mm -hmm. are really, really useful for. Um, and, and some of it is approachability. Some of it allowed me to get in a certain sense of humor. Right, but which then, always makes it go down a little easier. Right, absolutely. Well, humor is very disarming. Yes. And, you know, there's a, there's a reason that a lot of us get our news from sort of like news comedy shows. True. Um, but also, comics uh, allow people who have different ways of learning, like certain learning abilities and disabilities, mm -hmm. people who have dyslexia, people who have uh, English as a second language, or people who are in a crisis ah, and are really stressed out and might turn to a manual for staying stable when they are actually really stressing out and have a hard time looking at text reading, only. Just right. reading page like, after page. Like ants on a page. Yes, right? exactly. You know? And that right. happens lots. Everybody's been jangled and had, had a hard time reading through something complex. Sure. You have some tips for self-care, which we especially wanted to share with people. And uh -huh. there's a, a graphic here, the SMEDMERTS, right, right, um, right. which is an acronym for Sleep, Meds, Eat, Doctor, Mindfulness, Exercise, Routine, Tools, and Support System. You want to kind of run me through these? Uh-huh. Well, actually, the overriding idea is that it takes a lot of different uh, concentration or an, an awareness of a lot of different aspects of your life and a lot of different aspects of what it takes to be healthy. Yeah. So there's a lot of focus right now on medication. And while I have that as an M, as the second M, that's really for people who take medication. That's what I say. If you take meds, take your meds. But there the are all you're of these. To. Right, right, right. Exactly. Regularly and with the care of a doctor. But first and foremost, it's sleep, yeah. for example. First and foremost, we have to get enough sleep, regular sleep, and that needs a lot more attention, as well as the other things, like to eat in a way that nourishes you. And I would say mindfulness and meditation is a really important way to, uh, to get some perspective when you're getting really uh, kind of lost in the snarl of life to just kind of That's get some word. perspective and, and calm down. Support system, for sure, at the end, we're, we're hearing a lot about reaching out right now reaching out to, to people for support when, when you feel like it's right. overwhelming yourself. And if you don't have a family or a friend, there are, there are helplines, there are groups, right. but just knowing that we can't, none of us can do this alone. We have such an right. emphasis in our culture about being self-sufficient and pulling ourselves up by the right, bootstraps, right, right. but you know, my theory is there are seven billion of us on the planet because we need each other. Right, right, right. And the, the support system is important. Um, um, I'm, and if I can, if I can sure, add to that, yeah. <clears throat> so support system as a way of maintaining. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of emphasis right now on reaching out when you're in a crisis. But it's, it's about maintaining that kind of support system all the time. And developing one if you don't have one. Exactly. Which we can. I love that idea, and I think that's super important. And anybody can, you know, you may not have it in your family, but that doesn't right. mean you can't find it in your friends or elsewhere in your community. Right, right, exactly. Um, which is just, you know, something that, that I think we've all kind of grown up with this idea that our family has to be perfect, mm -hmm. but it's a family that you can make. Right, exactly. Uh, it doesn't have to be just your family of origin. So you have a traveling exhibition going on now, right? right. Tell me right. about that. 
So the National Library of Medicine asked me to curate an exhibit on graphic medicine. Um, and my work fits squarely into graphic medicine. Mm -hmm. What which, does that mean? Tell me more. Well, it's, um, it's uh, comics about health. So for the most part, it's, it's graphic memoirs. But there are also a, a lot of different ways of educating and communicating using, using comics. Um, and so the National Library of Medicine asked me to curate this exhibit for their, uh, for their traveling exhibition program. That's amazing. That so, is so, really amazing. So right now it's in Seattle at the Central Library, and it's going to be traveling around um, for, well, it's booked for the next four years. It was immediately booked for the mm -hmm. next four years, which is, uh, I don't That's know, a thrill good. and an honor. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> really yeah, yeah. And, and just to conclude, tell me a bit about how your personal experience living with bipolar disorder helped you to kind of shape these ideas and figure out how to help other people navigate. Well, I've, I've certainly had a big focus on staying stable. It's really important to me to be healthy. And, um, and I have been stable since 2002. Like, I, I haven't actually uh, cycled since mm -hmm. then. Um, and I, I've gotten a lot of questions about what I do, and that's why, I mean, everybody has their own story, and I'm not saying if you do what I do, then, you know, and I'm special that way. Yeah. But, um, but I've learned over the years the different things that have really helped me a lot, and it's really important to me to take this experience that has had a lot of pain and negativity and make it into something positive for myself and for sure for other people. Well, it does give people ideas, but it gives them hope and it also keeps that conversation open because we've all been through something. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it, this doesn't need to be a shameful thing. It shouldn't be, it can't be. You mm -hmm. know, it's part of being human. We have to talk about it. Right, right, right. Definitely, I agree. Ellen, thank you so much. Thank I am you so much in for great having admiration me. of the book and the exhibition and I really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Up next, a new book helping people prepare for the adventure of parenthood, another thing that can jangle you a little bit. Back after this.